All right, it's 10. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. So we probably have to turn it a little down. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining the uh, session today. My name is Jan Simon Möller. I'm the release manager for AGL, and today I want to talk about reproducible builds on one side and software bill of materials on the other side. Um, as I said, I'm the release manager. I'm also on the Yocto project uh, board uh, for AGL. And uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to me. My email um, is in the slides, which are on SCAD. Um, uploaded now. So today I want to forge a bridge basically from reproducible builds uh, over software build materials and why they are, uh, why they go so well together. Um, and uh, I'll introduce how uh, to basically do reproducible builds with Yocto and how to do software bill of materials with Yocto so you know how to do that in your projects. So reproducible builds, what does that mean? What is it? Essentially reproducible builds means that the same sources with the same configuration compiled will always produce the same binary output, right? So the compiler, linker, whatever happens uh, during the build lead to exactly the same outcome. In other words, the build system needs to be deterministic and your build from today is the same as from tomorrow in two years. Um, or between host A, host B, right, developer A, developer B, same binary outcome. Well, that's actually what we want, right, for the same code in question. Um, yeah, that's what we want. But, well, reality is that that's not always the case. It's not that easy. So, um, just kind of tip of the iceberg example. Um, let's say as a developer while developing, I have 20 copies of, well, my source code around, and when I try it out, I want to see, uh, I want to know, like, where I built it, uh, what revision, and, right? Because if I try that binary, I need to know what source tree it was. But exactly that information, which is helpful during development, makes it not reproducible, right? We have folders here. We have dates, timestamps, uh, unique build IDs, and stuff like that. I mean, the git commit is unique, so, um, we could even leave that in the version number, um, but uh, the folders are host specific. Date, of course, and so on. Username, different between hosts, and so on. So this is something we do not want to see in the binary because it makes them not reproducible. So this is just tip of the iceberg example. Um, now, there are other areas, compilers. Right? In the compiler, there is, for example, um, if you build the debug symbols, the debug symbols usually contain the path to the sources where things were built, right? So we need options that say this path at build time is this path at runtime uh, and map this. So there's a GCC option that does that. The Octo build system has that built in for you, right? Um, 
So this is just one example. Um, uh, in Go and Rust, things are still in progress. Uh, I don't know which one of them does embed the build path as well. So it makes them essentially non-reproducible across hosts. Yeah. Um, so that is a bigger effort, essentially. And there's a project called Reproducible Builds, which has been around for a few years and uh, which drive these efforts to, well, change the source code, to not have a path in there, to not have some, well, non-reproducible bits in there. Um, and that's reproduciblebuilds.org. Um, the Yocta project, um, which is what we use for building, um, has strong support for reproducible builds. Actually, since uh, 4.0, um, reproducible builds is turned on by default in Yocto. OE Core is fully reproducible. I think there are just two packages which are not um, fully reproducible. Um, but not all other layers in the ecosystem are, right? Um, and we need to do some work on our uh, builds and layers as well. So, as I said, it's now a default, and the only setting we uh, basically can pick uh, is uh, source state epoch. So we can um, give a timestamp a known timestamp to the source files. Um, and in the end, we can also do the same with the rootfs, uh, which also uh, helps because it gives you the initial clock. Yeah, if there is no, the, the initial time, if there is no RTC in the system, the time will be derived from the file system timestamp. So on first boot, you will have this time and date to start with on most of our dev boards because there is no RTC. So full uh, reproducibility um, and uh, within a Yocto build has multiple um, useful effects. Um, well, what we, of course, what we want is we want the same binary image out uh, if we build, let's say, a year from now to debug something. So that is what we want. More reprodu increased reprodu reproducibility also means we have more reuse of the estate cache. Yeah, estate is a binary cache. Um, the more reproducible our binaries are in the build, the more reuse we have, the less we have to rebuild. And uh, it also uh, goes well together with, with the off full offline builds, which means uh, during the build, we are completely uh, uh, offline and not accessing the internet at all. So let's take a step back and look at the build flow. Um, so um, that's how Yocto essentially, uh, that's how BitBake essentially works. Uh, we have the sources over here, and we have basically two chains. We have the native tools. So light blue runs on your build machine. So it's like native x86. So this is compiled to native x86. We try to have as less dependencies on build host tooling as possible. Um, so then we have the native tools. They are then used to build 
the target packages. So this is then ARM, for example. Um, and that's then used to construct the image. And you see we use hashes here quite a lot. Um, so we can exactly track uh, if source changes, um, if the outcome of uh, a build changes, uh, I can, and can basically track through the whole chain down to the image. So let's say if this shard changes, we, uh, we know that we have to rebuild the whole chain uh, down to the target image. So for reproducible builds, uh, let me just recap a few uh, variables that are useful to you. Um, there is a local cache for the sources. This is download there. There is the binary estate there. So this is a binary cache for build artifacts. Um, and this, is, this applies for a few um, <coughs> binary outcomes during the build. Um, the sources are stored in download there. If we turn on an option, we basically could just shuffle download there onto a web server and that would be a mirror. Um, there are actually two variables for mirroring. One is called pre-mirror and one is called mirror. So pre-mirror is used as the uh, first, um, first source. So this could be kind of internal to your, um, to your team or internal to your company. Yeah. Um, so we first would try a pre-mirror. Then we would go out to the specified source URI, the original URL in the recipe. And if that one fails, the Yocto project and AGL do have a mirror for, well, previously used artifacts, right? Things might vanish from some uh, locations. Uh, they shouldn't, but that happens. So we still have a backup here. We can also use the uh, archiver class. So if we need to archive um, our sources anyway for license compliance, there is a nice class called archiver. And it basically, we can do a dual use if we set the archiver to this setup. Ta-da, we, the, the, uh, we get output that is uh, usable as a Yocto mirror right away. So there are interesting options that let us then do an offline build. So there is BB no network. BB no network means do not access the network. There will be no network access during the build. Um, so that means all the sources need to be local. Or, with the little exception, BB fetch Premiere only, it would allow the quote unquote company internal mirror still. Yeah? So this means with, with those settings, you can try basically going full offline. And this means you are able to reproduce your build with whatever you backed up previously. Now to the binary side. If you move your estate directory to a web server, you can use estate mirrors. Always useful if you can download faster than build. 
So that's useful. Um, now, to increase the use of our binary cache, the estate, um, <coughs> there is a new um, subsystem, and that's the hash surf. Um, the hash surf works in a way that if I, well, even if the recipe changes here and I do a build and I find out, well, we know that um, binary hash, right? Because the source change, the source changes, but it was a commit to the documentation and not to the code. And that file never sees the target. Yeah, so I have a change in the source. I do rebuild this, but the outcome here, at least what, what we reuse, what we need, is binary identical, right? If that's the case, I can say, well, A equals B, so we can short circuit it. And that's what happens here. Um, we have a change in, let's say, liby, but this change does not affect the binary output. Perfect. We rebuild liby, figure out the hash for the binary is identical. Then we do not need to rebuild the rest of the chain here. So we can just say, okay, we are done. So this improves build speed, um, but you need to run a hash surf and point big back to it. By default, big back will run um, a hash surf on localhost, but it's not reused. So if you want maximum reuse, you basically pair an S-state mirror with a hash surf. Now, <coughs> pardon me, um, reproducibility. There is an OE self-test. So OE self-test is a framework which has a lot of tests that you can, um, which are used to ensure bit bake uh, functions properly. Um, and there is also a reproducibility test. So that's what's used to ensure OE core is fully reproducible. Um, it works in a way it does basically one full build. It's rather heavy because you need to build twice, right? Um, it uh, basically does one build A, then it does one build B, both from scratch, um, well, the first one could use estate, but the second one has to be from scratch, right? Um, and then it says, is there any binary difference? The, uh, um, little caveat here is the image that is being tested is actually in the uh, encoded in the test case, so it's not a command line option. Uh, so to apply this to your own image, you have to uh, create your own magic layer, meta self-test, and call it meta self-test. Um, and then you can basically subclass this, uh, it's written in Python, subclass this test um, and extend it, so it must be in meta self-test, lib, oe, qa, whatever. Um, and then you can add your own image and have it tested. So reproducible builds are key for build performance, long-term maintainability, and they also help with uh, local 
or network caches uh, because they improve the reuse of the binary caches. Now, software bill of materials. Let's change gears and take a look at this. <coughs> well, I'm, I'm sure you have seen that one from XKCD. Um, so the why is kind of clear, right? Like, remember log4j, which is one of the tip of the icebergs here. And as a follow-up, um, there have been uh, the executive order in the US, similar legislation is going on in Europe. The reason is essentially, well, our overlords figured, ooh, our software supply chains are at least as complex as our physical supply chains. Uh, and uh, essentially for, for us developers, bottom line is SBOM is mandatory going forward. But what is that thing? Um, essentially, it's an inventory of what is included in our application in terms of libraries, components, whatever. Um, where did it come from? What version it is? Um, also, what li licenses are in there, which then we can answer the questions, are we complying with those software licenses? Um, we track the versions so we can check if we are vulnerable to exploits. Um, and uh, basically, we can trace back our whatever we have in here to the source code. And in principle, as we, are, as we can embed hashes of the binary there, right? we can also say, Here's the S-bomb. Here's the image, or whatever is on the device. Uh, has any binary been altered? Right? So we could kind of do analysis with that there. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so how do we describe that? So just one, one standard here is SPDX. And uh, SPDX grew out of the license compliance area. So we track, originally we tracked licenses, right? So uh, package X has license foo and so on. But I mean, it's, it's essentially uh, um, um, yeah, XML, so you can stuff in there whatever you want. Um, and essentially that's what happened. We do scram more information in that format, and that's then um, not just licenses, but also dependency information and whatever we want in such an uh, SBOM. Now, I was looking, for, I missed that slide. I meant to show a slide. Uh, well, so. Um, where are we now? Okay, maybe it comes. I had one slide in mind. So, one analogy for the S bomb is essentially think of it like a nutrition label, right? I have a little bit of BusyBox, I have the Linux kernel, and I have XYZ, libfu in it. Okay, now back to the practic practical stuff. How can we generate that? In Yocto, there is a class, generate SPDX. So you just inherit that in your local.conf, and it will spit out F files, <laughs> a lot of them. So the outcome will be in an archive. Um, so short background, um, kind of that ecosystem is evolving and in flux. So um, we basically do create not one big 
uh, SPDX file for the image, right? We do SPDX files for each package, and the image will have references, which is valid in SPDX, but not all tooling likes the references so far. Um, so keep that in mind. <coughs> we do build that for each package, one for the image, which contains references to those, and there's an index as well. So that's what you, you should then use going on. Uh, in AGL, we did a wrapper. Well, uh, for AGL setup, you just turn on AGL create as PDX. Now, what's the outcome? So kind of for the usual IVI demo, um, we get an 11 megabyte archive and 175 megabyte. Yeah, so it's a lot of data that we produce here. Yeah. Um, well, in turn, you could say, going from source to binary, that's the kind of information we lose in that translation. Yeah. So back to the workflow here. Um, essentially, this enables us to track back. Um, now, this is not completely built yet, but in, in principle, this is possible. Right? We have in the build system all that information and um, we could basically use that and build the tooling to completely trace back. Um, note, the current format of SPDX is 2.2.1, I think, and there's a revision three in the works, and there are different uh, profiles um, being prepared. One is the build profile, and the Yocto project is one of the contributors to that build profile, basically SPDX data captured during the build. Yeah? The other option would be to do it afterward with, with, with scanners. Pick your tool, I will just name one like Phosology. Yeah? So with scanners after the fact, or with scanners just for the sources, but then we don't have the build, so there's a disconnect. So, um, yeah, SPDX generation happens here, um, and um, there are a plethora of things that we can track. If you want to know more, um, I, uh, I stole those slides from Joshua Watt, who is the um, kind of main developer doing the Create SPDX class, as well as reproducible builds. So in my, at the end, I have links to his presentations. If you want to dive into that and know more, the links are in here, highly recommended. And he did the heavy lifting, not me. So in the end, let's put that all together. Um, reproducible builds mean we have a, de a de deterministic path from source to binary. And <coughs> Also, in my opinion, that's a key element. Otherwise, our S-bomb, right, is a, would be a one-off. Yeah? For every build we do, we would have to do a new S-bomb. Um, and uh, also, as I said, we could track back from binary to source with help of the S-bomb more easily. There are... <coughs> There are tools out there, um, I, I don't recall the name, it's something with G, I have it in the links later, uh, not Gradle, uh, Gripe, which you can feed an S-bomb, right, and it will go through it and print out the CVEs. Yeah, without crawling through the binary image, just based on, on the S-bomb, we can do analysis, um, and there are, there are online tools. Um, uh, Daggerboard, for example, which is kind of a web interface. You upload an S-bomb and it does its magic. 
Um, so the tooling for kind of processing SPDX file, there is still a gap. So that needs to evolve, and that's evolving quite rapidly. Um, and um, yeah, we're looking forward to see what's coming on. So right now, we just produce kind of big piles of SPDX data, and we, it's hard to then, OK, so what now, right? So that tooling is evolving here. Gripe is the one tool I was looking at. And some of the tools, yeah, um, well, early stage, right? They have really problems crunching our big image uh, uh, SPDX files. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Yes? Say that again. So could you just like, is there a way that they can send a command to build it once, wipe it out, you know, save the binary, and then build it again, or do you have to feed it a pre-built binary? For the reproducible build test? Um, so the, the OE self-test for reproducible builds, uh, you can do build A, you can do with estate, or from scratch and build, build B will always be from scratch. Yeah? Um, yeah, that's, that's how the self-test works. Yeah. Joel, and then... Essentially, no, yeah, yeah, and I think in in Yocto they have some they do some magic, yeah. Um, so Yocto can use the uh, debug in for D. So I would have to look into into the the. the C flags of Yocto to give you the proper answer here. Uh, I think they do something with the with the build ID. Um, I just don't recall the detail. Yeah. Yeah. So the the source path is mapped. So there is this uh, f prefix map thing which basically takes the, the work there and replaces that with user source, whatever. Uh, so that's handled for the, uh, for the build ID. We have to take a look at the, at the Yocto C flags. I've seen it, I just don't recall. Um, Philip? Uh, good question. Is the SPDX task estateable? Um, I have to look. It should be one of the artifacts because if, if we have if we have the binary, right? If we f if we found a binary in the estate, we also need to find the matching SPDX blob. I would say yes. Yeah. Otherwi otherwise, uh, Yocto would have to pull down the sources again, right, to do the SPDX magic. So um, just a note on create SPDX. Create SPDX is no scanner, right? So Fosology and ORT, they do full scanning. Uh, create SPDX mainly uses the declared license out of the recipe but it also does some sanity scans for SPDX tags. 
within the sources. So it at least checks if, we are, if there is no kind of really obvious conflict. Yeah, but in principle, it's the declared license. Yeah. We have to check the SPDX class. I would say uh, no. There is nothing. I mean, create SPDX does what it does. Yeah, but I don't have a way to inject something right now. Um. So the SPDX data is written out with the same image name for what it was created, with the whole date in it and so on. So if you leave it right next to the image, then you can match it up. So and, and the, the image is, is in the SP the, the, the actual image recipe and so on is in the SPDX data. So you can match the, the binary image to the S bomb. Well it, well, it belongs together anyway. Um, now it adds whatever custom ID. Mm. Pardon? No. No. Because it's focused on, on, on the on the on the image, not the bitback environment. Yeah. Okay. Can you repeat that? No, we record that information. So each patch in the recipe is being tracked in the SPDX. Um, if, um, so in SPDX you can, there is a field kind of CVEs uh, patched. I don't know the exact name, but you can say, okay, I have this version, which would be vulnerable, right? But um, um, I patched this CVE, so that tag is in the uh, SPDX document available. And in Yocto you can, uh, um, you can basically document that you have patched a CVE in the recipe. In the recipe. Yeah, when you do your patch, there's a way to say this fixes this CVE because Yocto has this uh, useful CVE checker, right? So Yocto can, can list you the known CVEs for your image as well. So that's a CVE check class. Right, so you could do that upfront. Um, so that's possible, and there's a way to say, I, "But I have patched this CVE." So you have to the yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. More questions? All right. Thanks for joining and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>